that's better. Hey guys, welcome back to the dirtiest room on all of YouTube. Seriously, this shit's so dirty, like, I keep tripping on cups, like, this joke has been redacted because Dylan did not know if it was offensive or not. And yeah, it's just, it's rough. Oh yeah. Dum -dum. And today, we talking about Wacky Yellow Dog. No, not that Wacky Yellow Dog. That one. But before we get into any specifics, let me start you guys off with a story. So I was born in 2002, and um, I live in the South. So this means for the first roughly seven years of my life, I had analog TV. And if you don't know what analog TV is, it's basically uh, radio, but for your TV. It uses like a big, like honking antenna, just sits on top of your house. And it wasn't the greatest, you know? When I, I think whenever it rained, or stormed or anything it just kind of died and I remember not always being the greatest like I definitely preferred going to my grandmother's because she had direct TV you know cable but it had a silver lining you know it had like one kids channel which was cool you know it was PBS kids the only other kids channel I remember was on uh, Saturday mornings on uh, channel 69 nice and um it played Sonic X. It was four kids. That's what it was. It was four kids. So, yeah, this was the only kids channel. <laughs> you know, and I loved it. You know, as a young kid, there were so many good shows. There was that uh, Word Girl. Uh, there was that one dog soup uh, speaking dog cartoon. My script says to look up the name for it. Somehow I have not looked up the name for it. What you gonna do? Um, Arthur, Sid the Science Kid. And then there's so much more, you know, like, uh, I remember right when, like, right around the time I stopped watching, uh, PBS Kids, you know, right around I started to get a little old, they had Wild Kratts, and I remember really liking Wild Kratts, but being at an age where I was ashamed to like Wild Kratts. There was one show that was my favorite, though. One, one amazing show, a show that even in my grandma's, I would watch it. A show that even to this day, I know what time it came on. 4 o'clock p.m., uh, right when Ellen came on. So, you know, tough decision as a kid to make, but I ultimately pulled through for a uh, fetch with Ruff Ruffman. And if you're Gen Z, you probably remember the show. I mean, unless you didn't watch PBS Kids, you bougie motherfucker. It was the top of its class. It won an award. And I mean, I'm not just any dingy award. It won a motherfucking Emmy for that bomb ass theme song. It didn't wait to renovate, found six contestants. All were great. The lighting's better now. I'll take it. And yeah, the show ran for four years, had five seasons, and was an amazing ass show. You see, see, it was so good. It was a show about a dog named Ruff Rothman. Um who uh let me check my script. No, yeah, no, nothing. I don't I don't remember anything. Um yeah, so I, I guess maybe it wasn't that great of a show. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like, I remember Fetch. Wait, fuck. His name's Ruff. Maybe I don't know anything. So, yes, the, the main guy's name's Ruff. Um, had a really good theme song, and that's kind of all I remember. But I found a Wikipedia article, which means you can't use it in your college paper. I'm sorry, but hey, we can use it in the video. So, yeah, let me just, let me just zoom in on this thing. All right, so... Basically, the show was a reality game show. Kind of like a kid survivor, except no one really got eliminated. The contestants were aged 10 to 14. Which makes me wonder, was there any, like, freshmen in the show? Like, if I was a freshman and I went on that show, I probably would've got bullied, like, to hell and back. But then again, I got bullied to hell and back anyway, so yeah. And wait, this means elementary students are, like, suiting up and fighting against these high schoolers. That doesn't seem very fair. Unless there's like a thing where the 14 year olds are in season 5 and the 10 year olds in season 2, you know, they split them up, which would, that would make a little more sense. But anyways, uh, one of the coolest things to me was the fact that there could be 14 year olds on the show. You gotta think about it. I was 7, almost 8 when the show was ending. So like seeing these cool, like double my age people, you know, like these cool kids or whatever. That was cool, you know? It made, it made the show seem more adult than it actually was. Half the contestants would go out and learn stuff like astronomy, carpentry, biology, etc. And the other half would stay inside and take the halftime quiz show. 
Uh, in each episode, the contestants will earn points, and the one with the most points won the season and the grand prize. And apparently, they could be goof prizes, which, I don't know, maybe, maybe as a kid, it wouldn't be like this, but if I was watching, like, a whole-ass show, like, a whole season of a show, and the winner won, uh, could win $100,000, and then they got $100,000 Monopoly dollars, that, that would kind of make the whole show so I'm, I'm just being real. I don't know, maybe y'all are different, but to me, that would, like, make the whole show kind of suck. But yeah, that's basically it. Uh, this in total drama worked so well for me as a kid, just because it was, like, the real thing, you know? It was, like, uh, Survivor, you know? It was, like, all these other big, like, reality TV shows, but as a kid's cartoon. And honestly, live action shows? Eh, gross. P.U. I only watch cartoons, dad. And honestly, they were, they're just better. Like, I watched season one of Total Drama Island with my friend. And, like, it still holds up kind of, sort of, not really, not at all. It's kind of a shitty show, but I like it because I watched it as a kid. <sighs> However, Fetch, though, getting back to that, because that's kind of what the title of the video is. Uh, it had one big issue. It liked to date itself hard um it had references to aaron carter beyonce crushed the sea turtle and a lot of other things in the early 2000s that uh aren't really relevant anymore okay well beyonce is relevant but the rest isn't especially aaron carter who the fuck knows who aaron carter is though again when he made references to stuff that i did know like darth vader it made it feel cool you know it made it feel like you know like other pbs kids shows were like you know whatever they had reference instead of Darth Vader, they had to reference like Planet Eater, the Dark Man, you know, or something. And like, I don't know. That's cool and all. But the real thing's much cooler. Anyways, though, anyways, you know, we, we could talk. We could talk all day about Rough Roughman this, Rough Roughman that. But the best way to experience it is by watching episode one. Of season five, I am sorry. Look, I, I searched up, you know, I, I was searching up Fetch with Rough Roughman on YouTube, and it turns out you have to pay for it. But season five, episode one, was the first one I saw that was free, so I was like, you know, fuck it. Yeah, let's watch that one. Uh, you can call me lazy. You can call me um dumb, but what I call this is my show, and that's how we do things around here. You can fuck out of here! Anyways, let's start. This episode is basically the picking contestants episode of the season. So it might not be the best episode to show you. But like, it's probably fine. You know, to get a feel for the comedy. And again, it's my channel. So, uh, you know, what do, what do you gotta do? What do you gotta do? Unsubscribe? Please don't. Oh, God. I'll do anything. I'll suck. Who are the season five fetchers? What? Okay, so I think the show actually taught me what seasons were. That's cool. Find six fetchers in the next 30 minutes or fetch goes off the air forever. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> Little did he know, the show would go off the air forever. My crack team of felines, rodents, and, uh... Why are all these kids getting rejected, huh? What do they do? See, Slim likes milk. He's a tabby. Wait a minute. He's a cat? No, 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 no. No cats. Honestly, Blossom. Sorry, guys. I, uh, I didn't know he was a racist. Um, next time I'll put a trigger warning in the video. And, and look, I, I'm sorry. It, it, it won't happen again. I've seen some of the commercials now, and they're very horrible. And I thought, I think I could do better. Damn, this kid really just said, y'all slacking. Good thing the show's publicly funded, though, because he could have pissed off some of his advertisers. Ooh, a text message from uh, Chet the Mouse. Wants me to pick up some fetchers. Okay, we're on our way. <laughs> that man is a predator. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm not saying he actually is a predator. I'm just, like, he has to be, right? Okay, kids at home, if a viking shows up at your doorstep, do me a favor, just go back inside. Shit, they made the joke for me, alright. Eeny, meeny, miny, Jay. Is Jay ready? Good, let's try him. Damn. Poor Jay. He'll always be known as the kid that was randomly selected for this. He was the draft pick. This is my special hangout room. I practice my guitar here. Also, holy shit, 
That man has a fucking music studio, and he's like 10. I wonder what he's cooked up in there. Off my socks. I do. You like Chinese food. Mushu. I regret asking. You're gonna be on <laughs> Fetch Season 5! Oh my gosh! You ready to have an awesome <laughs> summer? The oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm hyperventilating. He's literally Dustin. Like, like, I know that's, like, basic-ass, like, comparison, but he's literally Dustin. Tell me I'm wrong. Hello, Ruffy, dear. Ah, yes. Where the working man's mommy fetish came from. Oh, dear. Then it's time. The Great Reckoning has come. The fuck? The Great Reckoning? Like, like some biblical-ass, like, end-of-the-world shit? Okay, okay, um... Please, prophet, who is dog of yellow? Save us from the future that seems oh so mellow. Oh, go get it, son. I have to go, Ruffy. I don't want to miss it. Bye. Oh. All right, then. Oh, and, and yeah, I, I kind of did low-key steal that punchline from the show, you know. But hey, I mean, the, the, the show can legit be funny sometimes. You know, that just shows how good it is. You know, it just proves me right. I'm not lazy. You're just incorrect. This is Biscuit, and we got her when I was in third grade. You ever see dogs in old media and just be like, shit, that dog probably isn't alive anymore? Yeah, that's it. I just wanted to ruin your day a little bit. We can keep him going. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not saying I want to be Ruff's human tissue, but I am saying I can't stand up on camera right now, or I might get in trouble. My name's Mark, but I sometimes like being called Marco. My grandmother said that's a more Italian name. Is that? Holy shit, that's Yandere Dev. That's literally Yandere Dev. Oh, poor bastard. You know, one day you're picked up as a kid by some random Viking in a purple boat car mixture. And the next you're drinking come from a chalice. Wait, actually, that kind of seems like a chain of events that makes sense. R.I.P. Marco. My dad's a construction worker. He was redoing um, this place, and they were about to throw that away. And my dad was like, no, toss it my way. My son will have it hanging in his room. So now it's hanging in my room. Legit, though, this kid is, like, hella chill. Like, seems like someone I would have hanged out with. Someone I did hang out with, actually. In middle school. Not now. I, mean, I don't hang out with kids. Officer, I promise. Oh, I think it's going to be a great season two. You mean season five? Because I think you meant season 5, not season 2. So yeah, if I remember correctly, this whole, uh, like, Day of Reckoning thing is actually, is part of the plot line of the episode. Basically, Ruff's parents went missing when he was a kid, and he wants to find them, and apparently they're alive. And he gets coordinates, and they accidentally send the coordinates to the guy who's taking the kids to the studio. So basically... The kids are getting taken to a deserted island, and that's kind of the plot of this episode. And this makes Ruff go, SHIT! Which, uh, buddy, you can't say that on public television. I can barely say that on YouTube. So, like, calm down. But yeah, the rest of the episode is basically Ruff freaking out, and then being like, oh, if you don't get those fetchers back by tomorrow, you're fired! You know, usual cartoon shenanigans. And, uh, yeah. And overall, it was pretty good. Like, would I watch it if I cut it on air today? Probably not. But it made me laugh out loud twice, which is kind of incredible, you know? I went in expecting so little, and it got so much that I laughed out loud, like, twice. And that never happens, you know? Even in, like, good shit. But, so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that trip with me. And that was Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Before I get up out of the chair, let me just talk to you guys a little bit. So, um... Sorry it's been so long, you know, I took a two week break, and then I worked two weeks straight, and then I got the Rona, and I still have the Rona, uh, you may be asking like, well if you have Rona, why do you, it seems so normal, I'm near the end of the Rona, you know, I've been I had, having a couple bad days of it though, uh, yeah, and now, and I just started on the script three days ago, and I just got it finished today, and the video is going to be put out, well for you it's the video is going to be put out today, but for me, it's probably going to be put out like a week from now. Um, so sorry about that. Um, thanks to all the people DMing me about the video. Like it's, it's, it's weird. It's like people, you know, y'all actually seem to like really care and 
you know, I've had like three or four people DM me like, hey, when's the video coming up? When's the video coming up? It's been so long. I want a new video. So thanks. It genuinely means a lot. And when I just see you guys show that y'all care, just, it means a lot to me. It makes me want to keep doing this. And, uh, anyways, bye.